Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to move on from our Disney series and we're going to focus on BTI, British American Tobacco. Uh, we found this in the viewer request for the Everything Money software uh, right here. I'm sure it's way up here now. Um, but to touch base on that, let's see if Everything Money has made a video on it. It doesn't look like they have. Yeah, this is back to August 8th. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have, so uh, they did not fill that viewer request, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for those multiple people that requested BTI. I am looking to uh, uh, make a follow-up video on Disney in the future. I don't know when I'll do that, but in a couple months down the road, I'm sure I will touch back in base with uh, Disney. So if you are like that set of videos, I am going to do a follow-up and update that set of videos. But before we get into this video in particular, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and it's for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in BTI unless it is in my VT Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index Fund or maybe VXUS Total International Stock Market Index Fund. But nonetheless, I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Just state my opinion here and we're going to focus on the financial statements of BTI. So going into this, market cap $94 billion. Uh, pretty so they are profitable net income year to date 8 billion 30 billion in revenue little disconnect from our five-year PE current PE at 11.7 uh, profit margins year to date 26 percent extremely profitable I love that but there is a big disconnect right here with my five-year profit margin so we are going to look into that a little bit uh, year to date gross profit margins 82.9 percent Wow that is extremely good profit margins right there, our gross profit margins. Uh, price to sales, 3.1. So for every $3.10 I put into investing into this company, they generate $1 in revenue. But matching that up with these profit margins and gross margins, that's pretty attractive to say the least. Um, free cash flow year to date. 10 billion and 10.61 billion in free cash flow year to date. I love that. And right in line with their five year average, they do pay a dividend 6.3% dividend. Wow, that is, a, that is an attractive dividend alone. And dividends paid 5.8 billion. Their free cash flow year to date easily covers that dividend. So I am very attracted in this already off first glance. Uh, they have return on assets and equity. They 7.2% year-to-date return on invested capital. It's a little bit below my 9% that everything money is looking for. But nonetheless, they are getting return on their invested capital and five-year average of 6.4 right in line. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, look down here. Let's zoom in on this. I'll zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Following the acquisition of Reynolds, Amer okay, so they made an acquisition. I'm going to want to make sure I touch base on the acquisitions. If I forget to do that, I will make sure I, I touch base on the acquisitions right there. Uh, British American Tobacco, uh, neck and neck with Philip Morris International for the largest listed global tobacco company. Okay, so it's a tobacco company. Here is a list of some of their brands. Okay. So, very interesting stuff right there. Let's go to the income statement and see what we're dealing with here. Uh, so revenue, I can see pretty consistent revenue. There is a large, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. This is 2008. Why am I looking at 2000? Yeah, they had 30 billion in revenue. What the heck is going on here? Let's go to annual. Okay, okay. So international companies sometimes with the everything money software, uh, the four quarter, when I adjust it for their last four quarters, they're not getting the quarterly statements put into this. So we are going to focus on the annual right here. So I'm not going to have, if they've posted two earnings reports this year, I'm going to be missing out on two uh, quarters of financial data. But nonetheless, we're still going to go over the financials uh, up until 2021. That is a little bit scary because 2021 was a crazy year with all-time low interest rates and stimulus checks. A lot of people had money, but nonetheless, we're still going to go over this. Now, cost of goods sold, right in line. I don't see any large increases, but I'm sure in their 2022, their cost of goods sold is probably higher. So I'm going to want to touch base on that probably in a uh, the next video or the video after. I'm not sure, but we are going to touch base with that. Um, what else do I need to see? Net income. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 44 in 2017 
44 billion in net income there's got to be something to do with an acquisition right in there so we are definitely going to go look at the acquisitions and see something there but nonetheless i would expect pretty consistent if we take out the year of 2017 a pretty consistent revenue right here and growing at a pretty decent pace so i'm very attracted right there i don't see nothing really out of the ordinary except for this 2017 year with 44 billion we definitely got to check that out so down to the shares uh now i can see following that 2017 year they pretty consistent 2017 they had the issue shares so i'm i'm guessing that the issue shares for this acquisition and probably had the issue more shares following that for the acquisition is what i would assume but now staying right in line so nothing alarming in terms of the last four years with share dilution i like that and their dividends right in line big increase right here in the dividends but then they had to cut it a little bit i'm sure for the acquisition but staying right in line with with the dividends paid or per share so it looks like a pretty consistent dividend so 6.3 percent if that's accurate that is going to be attractive alone especially with the payout ratio right around that 50 percent so pretty interesting there uh well, yeah let's go look at the cash flow statements okay we're on annual yeah that uh 2017 year let's go look at the acquisitions okay so they made a small now remember they're 30 30 billion in revenue this is a small acquisition they sold off a, i'm sure a couple of brands uh sold off part of their department a little bit not much only 46 million a couple of other small oh yep 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 2017 already called it out knew that this was going to be a big acquisition right here 20 billion uh acquisition now i'm going to want to uh focus on 2017 i'm sure that the stock price uh probably took a took a dump off of 2017 following this but since then i'm sure uh, actually I, I, i'm not going to say i'm sure but we're definitely going to look into this 2017 year nonetheless but following that pretty consistent free cash flow following those years so the company is profitable extremely profitable i'm very interested in that but we do have to look into 2017 see what's going on there uh, in terms of debt uh we should go to return on invest capital look at the debt but we'll do that in the balance sheet here before we do that yeah look at this debt repayment they took on a lot issued issuance of debt right here 2017 the same acquisition year they issued 48 billion in debt okay a lot of time has passed since there and they've consistently been paying off debt and especially in 2020 sorry the headset went out right there but in 2020 they uh, uh paid off 12 billion so that we're going to touch base on the debt but they have been repurchasing capital stock consistently i like when they're buying back shares uh yeah let's go check base on the balance sheet Okay, so total current assets, oh, we're on quarterly, again, 2006, that's weird, I don't like how that, it's like that. Okay, so now we're on our end, well, we got 2021 right here, current assets around 15 billion, total assets 162 billion, so if I was looking for a current ratio, I want to see their total long-term liabilities, or their current liabilities, uh, lower than this 162, here's our liabilities, total current liability or total liability is 82 billion so about a 2.0 current ratio is this company going out of business anytime soon no i'm not worried about that that's a solid current ratio i like that and total long-term liabilities 64 billion so i want to see their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by five be higher than long-term liabilities in terms of debt comfortability now i'm sure with the acquisition in 2017 that uh, they are probably a little bit higher in the debt because that was a big acquisition. Let's not forget that. But uh, yeah, pretty good stuff right there. Let's just go check the eight pillars tab. And okay, so they've been uh, over the last five years. This is add in that five years. It's adding in the shares outstanding that they diluted for post acquisition. But going back to the income statement, we can see right here the last th four years pretty consistent i'm not worried about that that share dilution right there because here was that big increase in shares from 2017 am i worried about them diluting shares going into the future uh 
as of right now I'm not worried about this 12% this is misleading 100% and long-term liabilities divided by five-year average free cash flow uh, I'm not sure how much of that 2017 year let's go back to the free cash flow real quick and look at their free cash flow and see if that 2017 year was okay so uh, the 2017 year isn't too misleading on the free cash flow so I do like their five-year average free cash flow and consistently following that been bringing in tons of free cash flow so I I like that number so a little bit still a little bit higher in the debt but if you look at their debt repayment consistently paying off that debt am I going to be worried about the debt moving forward so it's a little bit higher but nonetheless I'm not as worried about this red check mark return on vested capital you know a little bit lower but we can work with that uh, net income growth decreasing but you know not too much uh, it, their five-year average so this is net income growth from five-year average if we go back to the income statement here's our 2017 year 44 billion in net income the year they made that acquisition this is misleading their five-year numbers so I'm not worried about that check mark that red check either because following that consistent net income and growing so they're actually growing their net income so is it a red check mark or is it something that is actually a positive I look at it as a positive because they're growing their their net income this misleading their five-year numbers 100% no question about that um, yeah this is pretty attractive I'm not surprised that people were requesting multiple people were requesting this in the everything money chat um, that is going to wrap up this video I'm going to, I'm very intrigued in uh, making fall our more videos on BTI very interesting stuff right here I hope you guys enjoyed my breakdown of the financial statements but we definitely got to go check uh, yeah let's just go to return on invested capital real quick actually and look at BTI and look at that debt directly so um, uh, where is our debt man of course I just cannot find it long-term debt right here so let's look at that 2017 year boom oh man look at that huge issuance of debt right there but now look they've been consistently paying off that debt Am I as worried about the debt? You know, it's still a little bit higher, but they've been growing as a company all in all. And uh, are they going to get to levels where we're more comfortable with that debt? You know, it's possible. I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, for the most part, I liked everything that we've seen in terms of the financials. I look forward to making our part two, uh, where we might uh, see if we can find the financial data for their last two quarters. But if we're not able to do that, we, we'll be able to work around it. So uh, maybe evaluation, we'll dive into the stock analyzer tool for this company. And following that, we'll be going into the chart. Yeah, I hope you guys like the content a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, really good information, I thought. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next videos.